بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى ثم أما بعد The attainment The reward The prize Allah promised المتقين Allah says حدائق وأعنابا Gardens and grapevine Allah Azza wa Jal will grant them gardens with different types of fruits, trees, flowers and roses. But one thing will be distinct is that these gardens will have high fences. The high fences are to give a sense of privacy. One feels that this is his private property. And the beauty of Jannah is that anything you think of, any type of fruit you think of, you get. You don't have to reach out. They're readily available. They hang down. They're down. They're reachable, within reach. Anything you think of comes to you. You don't have to exert any effort. Isn't this beautiful, brothers? Isn't this worth working for? We ask Allah al firdaws al a'la. Allahumma amin. Wa kawa'i ba'atraba. And full-breasted female companions of equal ages. This is talking about al-hur al they're equal. They're equal in everything. In their age, and their beauty, and their physical description. And they're special for the men of Jannah. See, Allah Azza wa Jal knows the nature of His creation. And when He promises them rewards, He promises them with things they can relate to. Fruits, gardens, rivers, women. Because Allah Azza wa knows our nature. But the question here, which is always asked by sisters, men get hurin, what do we get? Shaykh al Uthaymin rahmatullah and others said Allah Azza wa did not mention that because or due to the nature of women they're bashful they're shy if you tell them or if you address this issue to them it is too embarrassing but that's why Allah Azza wa mentioned general rewards and you will have therein what you wish and desire and that's for men and women Anything they wish and desire. It's enough for a woman to know that she will be the princess, rather the queen of all of the Hurul Heen. Regardless of how beautiful and all this fantastic description of these Hurul Heen that are mentioned in the Quran and mentioned in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, the wife in Jannah will be the best and will be in charge. She will be the queen in charge of all of these children. وَكَأْسًا دِهَاقَ And a full cup. A full cup of drinks. Different types of drinks. Allah mentioned in the Quran, wine, but it's not going to be intoxicating, of course. Doesn't have a hangover for those who drink it. Allah mentioned milk. Allah mentioned water. And Allah mentioned, mentioned honey. These are, these are things that were mentioned by name. Right? Ibn Abbas said, The cups will be filled to the brim. It will never decrease, regardless of how much people drink from it. Isn't it beautiful? 
You know, for those who are uh, coffee drinkers, when you drink your coffee, when you reach the last quarter of it or something, you start drinking it slower. Why? Because it's about to finish. Only coffee drinkers would appreciate what I'm saying. <laughs> right, Harun? <laughs> right? But in Jannah, this is not the case. You will never fear that the cup will ever finish because it never finishes. Allah Azza wa Jal refills it for you automatically. It's always full. We ask Allah al Jafar Dawsalana. La yasma'una fiha lawan wala ta'thima wala kithaba astaghfirullah. La yasma'una fiha lawan wala kithaba. They will not hear ill or useless speech therein or any falsehood. Again, the previous verses were talking about tangible things. Women, fruits, drinks. But this is something non-tangible. This is spiritual per se. They will not hear anything that will emotionally annoy them or disturb them. They deserve that for two reasons. Number one, they preserve their hearing from anything that would displease Allah. Unlike those who listen to music, for example. They're not preserving their ears from something that displeases Allah. They're setting it free to listen to it as they wish. But then they will find the recompense in the hereafter. That's compatible to this. But those whom Allah Azza wa Jal blessed and they preserve their hearing from things that do not please Allah Azza wa Jal will not hear anything that will emotionally displease them or annoy them. You find some brothers who are so weak in their personality, they will be sitting in a gathering and people are talking about something that's shameful. You know, the language used is low. Because unfortunately, some Muslims find it cool to use certain voca vocab in, in their conversation. You know, they feel it's, or some feel it's manly to use curse words, for example. Ah, oh, I'm a grown up man, I can curse. What? Now, the problem is that in that person who's sitting in such gatherings and does not stand up and leave. You can't. If you cannot prevent this from continuing, you're not allowed to sit with them. You need to preserve your hearing from something that pleases Allah, this pleases Allah Azzawajal. So those who did that become deserving of not hearing anything annoying or displeasing to them in Jannah. The second reason is for them having tolerated the evil words, insulting words, humiliating words they heard from the disbelievers. Jaza'an min rabbika ata'an hisaba As a reward from your Lord, a generous gift may do by account. Subhanallah. Allah's generosity is limitless. It's endless. And He will give. When Allah Azzawajal says, Jaza'an min rabbik, a reward from your Lord, and you're talking about the most generous, then regardless of what you expect, it's still better. Regardless of how good, it's still better. The best thing you can think of, it's still better because the Prophet ﷺ said, فِيهَا مَا لَا عِنُ الرَّأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Jannah will have what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no brain or no mind has ever perceived. 
you, you can't think of how good things are in Jannah. Allah only gave you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, only gave us few things to motivate us, encourage us to, to act and work for it. Right? But the actual attainment, the actual bliss, the actual prize, the actual bliss, the actual reward is beyond our imagination and perception. It is so good that we can't think of it. We can't because we're, our brains are limited to what it sees in this dunya. And that's the only thing it perceived. But in the akhirah, it's a different game. We ask Allah for those in رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا. From the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them, the most merciful they possess not from him authority for speech. All of this is from Allah Azza All the aforementioned reward is from the Lord of the heavens and the earth and what's between them. No one will be permitted, will have the authority to plead with Allah Azza wa to intercede with Allah Azza wa without His permission. No one will be allowed to speak and the only ones who speak on that day will be the messengers. What will they say on that day? Allahumma sallim sallim. Oh Allah, protect the believers. Oh Allah, protect the believers. Brothers, we spoke about some of the things awaiting us, inshallah, in Jannah. But we haven't spoken about the best. We ask Allah not to deprive us because of our sins and shortcomings. You know what is the best thing in Jannah? The best thing is being able to see Allah. In the book of Imam Muslim, Narrated by Suhaib radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When the people of Jannah enter Jannah, Allah the Almighty. Allah will address the people of Jannah and say, O oh people of Jannah, do you need anything? Is there anything that I can increase in your bliss? They will say, O oh Allah, did you not make our faces white and admit us into Jannah and save us from the fire of hell? The Prophet said then, Allah will, the, the veil will be removed. They were not given anything before that that's dearer to them than the bliss of look, at looking at the face of their Lord. 
Then he recited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam للذين أحسنوا الحسنى وزيادة For those who have done good is the best reward an extra and this is the extra the extra mentioned in the verse is the ability the bliss the reward of seeing the face of the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah azza wa jal goes back to reconfirm the certainty of the day of resurrection gives more details about that event. Allah says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفَّ لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِينَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ وَقَالَ صَوَابًا When the Spirit, the day when the Spirit, referring to Jibreel alayhi salam, and the angels will stand in rows, they will not speak except for one whom the most merciful permits and he will say what is correct Allah depicts this great event and scene it's a very distressing terrifying day can you imagine Allah Azza wa Jal favors whatever over other things and whomever he wishes over others. Allah Azza wa Jal favored Muhammad over Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over all messengers, favored Mecca over all the lands, favored Ramadan over all the months, favored Jumu'ah over all of the days, favored the nights of the last 10 of Ramadan over all of the other nights, the first days of 10 days of the Hijjah over all the days and favored Jibreel over all angels. The one who comes down with the revelations and inspirations from Allah. Imagine Jibreel will come speechless and angels rose after rose after rose, the number of whom is only known by Allah. they will not be able to speak. Out of glorification to Allah and out of fear. These angels do nothing wrong. You know, they're created not to disobey. They're created. The default is that they only obey Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is narrated by Hakim ibn Hizam and reported by Al-Tabarani, Classified as authentic by Sheikh Al Albani, Rahmatullahi Alihim Jami'an. The Prophet said, Do you hear what I can hear? He said, I can hear the pounding of the skies. And it has all the right to pound. There is not a space as little as needed for a hand span except. That there is an angel prostrating or standing. What do angels say? They praise Allah, they glorify Allah. This is what they do. And then when they're allowed to speak on the day of judgment, what will they say? Subhanaka ma abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. Glory be to you, we did not. Worship you with due worship, with the worship that you deserve, with the worship that your might and glory and exaltedness deserves. These are the words of the angels who never disobeyed. What will happen to us? No one will speak. On that day, all, vase, all voices will be silenced. All 
all silence, angels surrounding, things around you are different, you're naked, it's the day of resurrection, accountability is expected, sun, the sun draws down, comes closer, everybody is in great fear and horror on that day. And then Allah says, ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمُ الْحَقَّ فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ مَنَابًا That is the true, meaning the certain day. So he who wills may take to his Lord a way of return. This is what we're talking about. Isn't this certain day deserving? Doesn't it deserve that we act? That we prepare? That we're ready as much as we possibly can within human capacity? No one is claiming that anyone can be infallible. We're all faulty people. The Prophet said that. There is no one infallible. But we need to do our best to refrain. And when we do sin, to hasten to repentance. The door of repentance is always open until we are at the time of death, until it's departing. Then alas, it's of no avail. Another warning from Allah Azza wa Jal, confirming the certainty of that day and give him the chance. فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ مَآبًا if, if you want, if you wish, take away to your Lord. Take that path leading you to your Lord. Take that sirat al-mustaqeem. Follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we act so rebellion when it comes to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When he was the one who sent with this message and he was the one who guided us. إِنَّا أَنْذَرْنَاكُمْ عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا يَوْمَ يَنْظُرُ الْمَرْءُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهُ وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا Indeed, we have warned you of a near punishment. Near. Why near when it's on the Day of Judgment? Because as we mentioned before the hadith of Aisha, whenever one dies, that's when the day of judgment starts for him. That's when Qiyamah starts. So it's near. Because death can be right now. Or in a minute. Or in ten minutes. The fact that we don't know when it is makes it very near and very scary. The fact that this knowledge was made hidden was concealed, makes it scary and makes it close, very near to happening. <laughs> On the day when a man will observe what his hands have put forth. Allah calls upon us يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ O you who have believed, be conscious of Allah, be pious. إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازًا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ and let one look what he has sent forth for tomorrow. Tomorrow is when you die in real. Your Qiyamah starts. وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا And 
the disbeliever will say, Oh, I wish that I were dust. What humility is this? He wishes or he will wish to become dust. Why? Because of this description that was given in this verse. See, people of Quraysh rejected and denied and refused to accept or believe that this is something that's going to happen. So Allah is telling them, is again giving them a violent shock. By telling them that on that day, that certain day, you will see with your own eyes what's awaiting you from punishment and you will be so humiliated out of fear that you will wish that you were dust, you were nothing. Why? Because of what they became or will become certain of happening which is their punishment. With this we conclude Surah Amma. But the lessons we need to come out with from this Surah are to fully submit to Allah Azza wa Jal contrary to what the Quraysh did who denied and refused, we need to fully submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, we need to prepare and act and work hard to attain the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. Next, we need to protect ourselves. We need to be heedful of the punishment before we are about to approach anything that displeases Allah in any form or shape. We need to be mindful and heedful of the punishment mentioned in this surah and make that a motive or a motivating factor to act as a hindrance proof protecting us from falling into that error and committing that mistake. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who hear the best of speech and act accordingly. Allahumma ameen wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah ya rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma handika shudu ila ilaha ila anta astaghfiru.